this video is going to be comparing the dissection of a crayfish and a squid and discussing differences in their body plan, their digestive system, their respiratory system, circulatory system, and reproductive system. So both animals, the crayfish and the squid, have biradial symmetry, which means that they only have one line of symmetry that can divide their body into two halves. Um, but even though they have the same type of symmetry, they have very different body plans. So the body plan of a crayfish includes a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Um, and it has eight pairs of jointed appendages and it also has um, a really hard exoskeleton as its body, co body covering. The squid's body plan, um, because it is a mollusk, it consists of the foot, visceral mass, mantle, and the head. Um, and compared to the crayfish, it has a really high degree of cephalization. Um, squid have 10 appendages, um, including two long tentacles and eight arms and then they do not have an exoskeleton they have a soft body structure and no bones okay so when it comes to the digestive systems of these animals they both have closed digestive systems which means the food just travels through their mouth down all the way out to their anus and then um, through various digestive organs along the way. So the crayfish ingest their food with their little front appendages and bring the food to their mouth um, and then it goes straight into the cardiac stomach or through the esophagus to the cardiac stomach where it goes through mechanical digestion due to the little teeth-like structures that are in the cardiac stomach. Yes. And then the food, after it's been mechanically digested, goes into the pyloric stomach, which uh, chemically digests the food. Then after it has been chemically digested, it goes through the intestines where it is absorbed. Um, all the nutrients are absorbed and then it gets pooped out through the anus. Then you have the squid, which is a similar process because it is a closed digestive system. Um, but the food is consumed through the beak um, and it is the mechanical digestion process starts there. Squids kind of chew their food a little bit. Um, and then once it's been broken up, then it has some salivary glands, which kind of start the uh, chemical digestion as well. Um, then it travels through their esophagus, which is actually in the middle of their liver, and then into their stomach where it's uh, chemically digested, and then through their intestines and out their anus, which is actually above their head. So crayfish and squid have very different types of circulatory systems. Um, crayfish have an open, open circulatory system and squid have a closed circulatory system. But one thing that they do have in common is that they both use gills to bring oxygen into their respiratory system. Um, so squid have a closed circulatory system. They have a siphon that pumps the oxygenated water over the gills so that they can absorb the oxygen. Once the oxygen enters the bloodstream from the gills, the systemic heart will pump the blood through the body, and then there's a bran branchial or branchial heart <laughs> that is actually located the near the gills. Um, and its job, the branchial hearts, their job is to increase increase the blood pressure uh, within the whole system um, to optimize the oxygen intake. So the oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream through the gills and then oxygen um, rich blood goes through the body through the capillary beds into the organs and then the oxygen poor blood goes back to the heart and then that blood is pumped back past the um, gills again and the cycle repeats. So that is the circulatory and respiratory systems of a Crayfish have 
fish have an open circulatory system. So the water is brought in again and pushed over the gills um, and they get the oxygen from the gills which goes to circulate through the rest of the body. But instead of going in, in and out of the organs through the capillary beds, the system bathes the organs and the system in oxygen rich blood. Um, so the oxygen goes in and out through, the oxygenated blood goes in and out through diffusion instead of in and out through capillary beds. Um, and then the oxygen poor blood goes back through the circulatory system, back through the heart, and then back to the um, gills where it gets more oxygen and then it is a repeated cycle. Lastly, we have the reproductive structures um, and the reproductive system of squid and crayfish. So both of these animals have individual sexes, um, which means that there is a male animal and a female animal and they're separate from each other. Um, squid, in the squid, the males have internal sex organs. They have internal testes, an internal spermatophoric gland, the penis, um, and then females have internal ovaries. The males use a specialized arm to actually internally fertilize the females, and then the fertilized eggs are laid outside of the body until they hatch into the larva. With the crayfish, they have um, internal reproductive organs as well, but you can tell the sex of a crayfish more easily by looking at their external structures of their tail. Females have longer and more like feathery little swimmerettes on their tail than the males do. Um, and in crayfish, fertilization takes place externally, uh, which means no copulation takes place. And then the females hold the fertilized eggs on the outside of their body, but up against their abdomen, and they hold them there until they're ready to hatch. Um, and those longer swimmerettes help Kind of curl the tail in just a little bit to hold and protect those eggs. So that is a summary of all of the different systems of a squid versus a crayfish and the things that they have in common with each of the systems and the things that are different about each of the systems.